Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live 10 at 10. We begin tonight with breaking news involving a prominent political figure in North Dakota. Valley News Live has learned that Lieutenant Governor Drew Wrigley has admitted to having an affair. Good evening and thanks for joining us. The news broke about an hour ago on SayAnythingBlog.com. Editor Rob Port said he asked Wrigley after hearing rumors of an affair that possibly dated back two years ago and then getting an anonymous email. Port says he confronted Wrigley about it today. Uh, he acknowledged having an affair with a Bismarck woman, uh, would not specify the length of time with the woman, did indicate that he had not had any official uh, dealings with this woman uh, as a lieutenant governor. Said that Port added that Wrigley said he told his wife about the affair a couple of months ago. Wrigley's at the top of the list of potential Republican candidates for North Dakota governor and told Port that he is still considering a run for the office. When he puts himself forward to uh, Republican voters, first of all, in the primary process, uh, one thing that they're going to be considering is electability. And uh, in a situation like this certainly speaks to uh, electability, which, which is certainly clear. Wrigley did tell Port that now is not the time for politics, saying that he felt that the, this was a private matter. We did call the lieutenant governor's office today. He was not at work. You can see Rob Port's complete story. We have a link to his blog on our website at valleynewslive.com. Heartache and disbelief for family and friends after 23-year-olds found dead in his Moorhead home. Officers found Jordan Larry this morning. Police say heroin was also found in the home. Valley News Team's Krista Bame spoke with friends who were dealing with this loss that was made more difficult by what's being said on social media. As night falls, candles light up Ronke Park side by side, just like Eric, Justin, and Jordan stood side by side for years. He had the biggest smile, like the biggest smile. That's the only that's, I just keep constantly seeing his smile. They now stand side by side with others in tears at Romke Park. Without Jordan Larry, a friend, but more like a brother, an expecting father, now gone. Like the person who died wasn't the person that I knew. <laughs> Friends were aware of his fight to get clean. He wanted to, but he just wasn't ready to be sober. And... As it spread over social media, it only became harder to handle, with cruel comments covering the news. They, don't, they didn't know him at all. Like, they saw the word heroin, and all of a sudden, it's just bad. You don't know what people are going through at all in life, so you shouldn't judge anybody. Couldn't believe the, the disrespect of some people, like, saying that... Uh, Oh, another, another junkie died. Um, what, what a surprise. You know, like, that stuff, that, that got to me. Um, it's frustrating when, you know, he's not here to speak for himself. That's, it's not fair. Comments judging Jordan that hit some personally as they fight their own addiction battles. I still have friends that are, you know, in, on, going down the same path, and I'm absolutely terrified that, I could be getting a call that I lost another one. That's, uh, that's, that scares me more than anything. Sharing advice that each say needs to be taken seriously. This is a real issue in our community and something, something more needs to be done about it. Addiction, it changes you. You just do things you regret as they continue to be side by side always. Like it hurts you, but it affects everyone around you. Keeping Jordan's big smile alive through each other. Krista Bame, Valley News Live. Police say uh, though drugs were found in the home, an autopsy will confirm the official cause of death. Like every year before, many Minnesota schools are a month into the fall sports season and classes haven't started yet for most. New this year, Minnesota schools can start a few days before Labor Day if they choose to. But schools like Dilworth, Clinton, Felton still have a week to go before students start. Representative Paul Marquardt, also a DGF teacher, says the debate over the school start has been raging on for nearly a decade. He says it's the tourism industry versus the schools. Mark Ward also says about a third of school districts have already started. 
And we know that many more probably would have gone early, but the fact of the matter is we didn't decide this till June 12th when we were out of special session, much too late for a lot of school districts to try to change their schedule at that point. Opponents of schools starting early in Minnesota say kids don't have a summer and practices and classes get in the way. A local expert says the amount of attention given to missing people is creating fear in the community. Now, we've reported on multiple runaway teens this week who were found close to home within days. Faces are plastered on billboards, plastic bags, also some billboards and thousands of share posts on Facebook hoping to find missing people. Criminal justice professor Kevin Thompson says there could be a downfall to this phenomenon. There's a lot more fear and anxiety out there, so when a 15-year-old goes missing right away people's greatest fear is that person has been a victim of a serial killing or they've you know fallen victim or prey to some kind of stranger crime thompson does add a very small percentage of those missing are actually in danger a judge has ordered prosecutors to subpoena the school records of a teenage girl who was used to make a sex video with two junior hockey players in moorhead the records are being sought by attorneys for Thomas Carey and Brandon Smith. The order by Judge Michael Fritz says the girl and her parents must be notified and given a chance to respond to the subpoena. The girl and her mother turned down an earlier request. A trial for Carey and Smith is scheduled to begin in early December. It's Tuesday, and of course that means it's time for another restaurant report card. Valley News Team's Christine Stanwood uncovers this week's offenders and gives a clean plate award to a restaurant who was on our offender list two years ago. After researching, we found two restaurants with critical violations, both of which are in Fargo and are eager to correct their mistakes. We also have a good pepper and a bad pepper this week. We begin with Doolittle's Woodfire Grill with one critical violation for a cooler that wasn't keeping its proper temperature, and three non-critical for not keeping services clean and not having soap at the hand-washing station in the kitchen. The owner of the restaurant explains that the inspection happened during a lunch hour rush, and the soap dispenser was replaced that day. He says that providing a high-quality experience for customers is a number one priority for them. Our second offender is Pepper's Sports Cafe off of University. It had one critical violation for not having a working dishwasher. The manager didn't want to go on camera, but tells me that the machine was repaired the same day of the inspection. They also got a non-critical violation for not wiping down a malt machine, which was fixed at the time of the inspection. And we end with our good pepper. In 2013, the red pepper in Fargo was cited for a critical violation for not dating taco meat. They're shaping up enough that they're this week's Clean Plate Award winner for having a clean inspection. The manager of Red Pepper says that receiving this award shows that hard work pays off. Well, when we first opened, it was a hassle staying up to date with trying to keep everything wiped down, stocked right away. So that was part of the issues, and so now it's we're all getting trained in well enough and doing what we need to be doing. In Fargo, Christine Stanwood, Valley News Live. Now you can see this report and all the others. Just go to valleynewslive.com.